Male and female, I can appreciate a good-looking guy, and I can appreciate a good-looking woman. Some of these folks that I have as students literally have nothing wrong with them physically. They look, by all new standards, attractive. They're successful people, doing well in their careers and trading. However, they're being plagued by not being balanced with a significant other. Due to loneliness, they go into the marketplace and push the button to feel good. They're allowing their personal life to manifest itself in trading. You cannot look for a feel-good experience in trading. If you treat it like a massage parlor and look for a happy ending, don't be surprised if you end up with T4L. It's as simple as that. You can't do those types of things. These markets will literally take you out. They'll make you second-guess everything, remove all sound logic, and you'll lose control, like a drunken promiscuous affair on the weekend that your spouse doesn't know about. You'll be in there doing stuff you shouldn't be doing. So why invite it? Why live your life like that? To allow manifestations of those types of things in your trading, folks, this is your business. This isn't a game. This isn't a hobby. If it is, you're doing it wrong. You're doing it wrong unless this is your business and you're minding your business. You're gonna fail because you are competing against yourself. And if you haven't removed all the toxic things in your life and found coping skills to allow yourself to be fruitful, balanced, productive, and disciplined, do this, don't do that. If you can't do those things in your personal life, you sure as T4L ain't going to do it in trading. Who's managing you? Who's your boss? Who's going to reprimand you for losing money? I am honest about where my limitations are, and I have no bones about saying this is where my weakness is. My weakness in my trading is always my excess. I'm never satisfied with them. Does that make me poor of a trader? No, it means I'm honest. It means that I do have weaknesses. I just don't know how to make them better than they are. And when you have frailties, you have to embrace them. Don't try to hide from them because the fact that you're trying to hide from them is the same thing that causes everyone to have drawdown, blown accounts. Because you're trying to avoid that losing trade, that one singular event where it's now taken something from you. You're trying to avoid that, and the fact you're trying to avoid that singular transaction turns into a series and chain of them in your account's blood because you've ramped up your emotional and psychological impact. You've done that to yourself. That singular trade, that was a losing trade. You made it now more significant. The trade cheated on you. That trade went outside of the relationships and the boundaries you set for it. And now you feel betrayed. So what do you want to do? You want revenge? You want to go find that. That cheated on you and you go out there and go into the marketplace looking for him. And you don't find them. You find somebody else, and they take again from you, and they take again and again and again, and you're hurt more each time. It revs up that emotional and psychological impact, and you want it to go away. You want to feel a victory. You want to feel like you've done the right thing, because if you win, you've done the right thing in your mind. If you get the money back, you've done the right thing, and you didn't learn anything from that when you should have said, this hurt me. I'm going to take a step back and heal. I'm not going to get in a rush to get into a new relationship, a new trade. But it's not comfortable waiting around for Mr. Right or Miss Right. Hardships. You're going to have issues where you know you're going to feel like you got it figured out. You'll have a week or two, maybe even a month where you just did everything right. And this is where you get in trouble, young men. You think that you got it all figured out, and then you have a losing trade. It might not even be a significant loss. It might be something so small, half a percent or whatever. You save the stock from getting hit full on, like you had a 1% risk or 2% risk, and you saved it from getting knocked out. But still, it's a loss. Now you're not looking at the fact that you were able to mitigate the total 1 or 2% hit to your account because you protected the stop loss. You saw it was going to turn on you. You closed it before it went to your stop. That's commendable. That's a skill set. Not to promote the idea of paranoia, but if you're beginning to trade with live funds, if you do that initially and you are aggressive about cutting your losses, that alone would probably keep you alive long enough to find a way to grind through the adversities. Because when you get a real good winning trade, it doesn't wait around. It just takes off. The problem with this business is you want to second guess yourself so much because you're trying to avoid losing. This is the number one characteristic of a losing trader. You're willing to hold on to a losing or questionable trade. Come hell or high water, you'll hold that. 
It isn't moving like you wanted it to, but damn it. You're not letting go of it because what happens if you close it and it runs in your favor? What happens if you're wrong and you just held on to it too long? That's what usually happens. See, if your trade is right, it's going to show you right away. The perception of others about them, that's what they're trying to have, new equity highs in that. That's the problem when you go out and you start challenging people, especially people that have been doing it a long time, and you can't bring those results. That will rattle you, especially if you're a T4L fan. Again, it's like you're saying that they aren't that large downstairs. That's how they'll take it. That's what it feels like for a man in trading if they are sizing up with someone else or someone else is calling them or tapping them on the shoulder. That feeling of, I gotta live up to that because what if everyone else thinks that I can't do this and can't do that? And then what they do is they start doing things that they can't really do. And they are regretting it. All that kind of stuff. Don't do those things. If you don't do those things, I guarantee you, your results will be phenomenal because you're placing no image in the results. You have no expectations held over yourself. You're not saying, I have to hit 20. I got to do 10 a week. I got to do 100 in a month and a half or two months. All those types of goals are stupid. If you haven't been trading for at least three years and you're trying to do some stuff like that, you're really making it more difficult than it needs to be. Versus, what happens if you just try to make 2% a week? Would you be happy if you had a funded account with, I don't know, $100,000? and you tripled it over the course of a year? Mm. I mean, how many of you would be like, you know, you, I don't want 200,000. Are you crazy? $200,000. What the hell would I want to have $200,000 for? That's insulting, T4L. Why would you even ask me that? That's what some of you are basically saying without saying those words because you want to double your account every month. What would 200,000 a year do for someone like yourself? Would it change your comfort? Would it make things a little easier? How about getting yourself out of debt? Well, you don't have to work very hard to get that kind of result. It's very small little micro moves that you have to do. But when you make them for the week, you have to stop. Don't place any more Olympic feats on top of you. Don't try to live up to everyone's expectations of, hey, you know, you're a T4L student. You should be out there killing it like T4L style. No, no, one good trade a week. Do it and be done. <laughs> it's about making money. It's about making money, folks. Okay? It doesn't matter how many little hearts you get behind your Twitter posts or how many fanfare you get from all these other, I don't even know how Instagram works, whatever that stuff is that would fluff a person up. Those things don't matter. Making money does, paying your bills does, being able to eat, taking care of your family, paying your mortgage off. How about getting a house without a mortgage? Paying your car note off so that way you don't make any payments. New set of duds, clothes, doing something for someone that wouldn't expect it those types of things. That right there, that is a real motivator. Coping skills going through the processes that I've taught in great detail on my YouTube channel. But the problem is, you're one of those individuals that want T4L to get right to the point. The point is you don't listen. That's the point. The point is, you don't listen. You're not trying to take good advice. And you just want to do it your way. You want T4L mentorship. Okay, have it your way. Well, have it your way. Mentorships don't make millionaires. That's the way that works, okay? It creates emotionally charged traders that hold on to losing trades too long. And then when they fail and blow up in your face, that creates that loser cycle where you want to try to get it back right away. You know what that means? You're going to lose more money. And it just keeps repeating and repeating. And then finally, you blow your account and then what happens? You beat yourself up because you're going to look at the trades and say, why the hell did I even do that? There was nothing in the market. Why did I buy that? There was no fear that you got. There was no order block. It didn't even take Southside liquidity. What the hell was I doing? You're chasing emotional charges that you put behind that decision. You completely abandon all reasoning and why you even are trading. You're not the only one that's done that. Everybody does that. Everybody does it. Why is it so hard? Because you're competing with yourself. You have to live with yourself. You have to wake up in your own skin tomorrow and the day after, and the decisions that you make today and yesterday and what you'll make tomorrow come with consequences. You want consequences to be sugar-coated, almost orgasmic in trading. You want them to be happy endings. Not to sound crude, but that's what you really want. You want a chance meeting with a stranger and a knock on your bedpost. That's what you want. You want every night to be a one-night stand, 
and it's all good, feel-good moments. I'm sorry, sometimes you're going to wake up next to a hand grenade, and that's just the way it is, and you are going to hurt yourself. But you got to say, look, you know what? I got pip drunk. I made some poor decisions. Thankfully, I'm not married to this person. Just slip out before they wake up and just live on, you know, continue to trade and try not to do that same thing again. This goes for both the ladies and the men. You know what I'm talking about. Somebody just whispered, I just did that last week. I'm watching. I got my eyes on you. But the reason why it's so difficult trading is because you're competing against a savage in the making. You are such a formidable adversary that you alone are the one that's holding yourself back. Nobody else is holding you. These yahoos on the internet that say what you're trying to learn doesn't work. That didn't stop you. People commenting saying, oh, well, you know, you're doing this and you're doing that. This is the real way of doing it. That doesn't motivate you to go change that stuff. You're sticking to this. But you, you're the adversary. If you take the energy that you place in worrying about stupid and people that don't matter and you apply it to yourself and how you can build yourself up so that way you could be useful to yourself and your friends and family that are worth being around. Yes, I said that because there are family members that you shouldn't have in your small circle. And when I cut those out of my life too, man, happiness, happiness, because I'm going to tell you something. When you start making lots of money, your family does not like that. They don't like that. They're going to look at you and say, you know what? This guy, you know, I never noticed he has an ego problem. Look at him. He's buying these cars. No, I didn't drive my car to their house. I didn't say, this is how much I paid for my car. They just found out I bought these cars. Look at him. Now, these are my family. I'm a young guy. I'm trying to do what makes me happy as a young man. And I had family members literally get a case of the ass because, um is enjoying what I was able to do. Your friends, don't be surprised if they don't like the fact that you're successful and they're going to be spiteful because they are too lazy to do the same things that you're willing to give yourself a chance to work in grind through. Success is not something that falls in your lap. You gotta work for it. And that means that you got to take your attention away from stupid, silly, and stupid, silly people and apply it. It's truly an honor to be here today to share thoughts on a subject that lies at the intersection of strategy, risk, and the human psyche, the world of trading and investing. As we navigate the vast and dynamic landscape of financial markets, it's not just about charts, numbers, or algorithms. It's about understanding the intricate dance of market forces and, perhaps more importantly, mastering the art of mindset. Let's embark on this journey by first distinguishing between trading and investing. While they share the common goal of wealth accumulation, their approaches differ significantly. Trading involves the buying and selling of financial instruments with a focus on short-term gains, often taking advantage of market volatility. On the other hand, investing is a longer-term commitment, where assets are acquired with the expectation of appreciation over time. Both avenues, however, demand a deep understanding of the markets and a disciplined approach. The foundation of success in trading and investing lies in risk management. It's not just a strategic tool, it's a mindset that underscores every decision made in the financial arena. Before venturing into the markets, one must intimately understand their risk tolerance. This involves setting stop-loss orders, diversifying portfolios, and being prepared for unforeseen market shifts. Risk is inherent, but managing it wisely is the key to longevity in the financial game. Okay, now let's talk more about trading psychology. Psychology has a lot more to do with success in the markets than most traders will give credit. Proper trading psychology can be broken down into three key areas, which traders may focus their efforts on improvement. The three keys to success in the markets. One, focus on one method. Two, have a trading plan. 3. Build a winning psychology. Let's look at each of these important areas in little more depth. Keep your mind open to possibilities. Understanding that these three keys are essential to your development as a trader is absolutely necessary. Yeah, some of this might sound a little cheesy or like a motivational speech, but being a cynical, miserable person who thinks the power of positive thinking is a bunch of garbage will definitely not improve your chances of success in the Forex market but being positive and proactive 
will improve your odds if you only give it a chance. You will find it hard to succeed without mastering each key, so learn them well. 1. Focus on one method. You can focus on any method that you choose. However, focusing on one method, especially for new traders, is key to setting yourself up for success. This doesn't mean that you are limited to trade one strategy for the rest of your life. Rather, the point is to master one method first before adding more to your trading plan. Fundamentals and sentiment is the main driver behind the vast majority of price movements in the Forex market. In Forex, a trader will give himself the best chance of success if he implements a trading method based on the fundamentals and sentiment. Technical analysis is a very novice and retail way to trade the Forex markets. If you ask big currency traders at banks and funds what type of technical analysis they use to help them make trading decisions, you will likely get a very confused look on the trader's face. No trader with billions of dollars to invest looks at a chart covered with moving averages and indicators to make trade calls. Rather, they listen to what the central banks are telling them. Technical analysis has been made extremely popular because it speaks in absolutes. If this pattern shows up, then this is the result. If the moving average crosses this, then that will happen, etc. Whereas fundamentals are open to interpretation. Retail traders really like for sure outcomes, but what they typically find out, or maybe they cling to the delusion forever, is that nothing in trading is as simple as buy a pattern and make money. This is not to say that technical analysis is completely useless. Quite the opposite, actually. The key is to use technical analysis as a timing tool to enter and sometimes exit trades in line with the overall fundamental and sentiment picture. A mix of 80% fundamentals and sentiment combined with 20% technical analysis is a pretty good place to start. With fundamentals, the importance in any economic indicators lies in what the central bank is focusing on. Each central bank will only focus on one or two things at any given time. If, for example, the central bank is focusing on inflation and growth, then production numbers will have little impact on the movement of the currency, but GDP and CPI will have a great impact. Forex Factory has a great economic calendar that is free and gives you a good rundown on what each economic indicator means. You don't need to be an expert on the ins and outs of every single indicator. All you need to know is what the main indicators are that the central bank is focused on at that time to make decision on what tools they will use to enact monetary policy. What is the central bank worried about or focusing on? All traders should follow the central bank's lead. Never fight them because the trader will always lose. 1. Have a trading plan. Having a trading plan is an essential key to becoming a successful Forex trader. Without a trading plan, the trader is flying blind and may fall victim to taking random trades. If a trader does not take the time to formulate a well-thought-out trading plan, then it is almost certain that they will fail at the trading and investing game. Your trading plan is your objective approach to entering, managing, and exiting your trades. The plan's sole objective should be to take out the emotions from your trading decisions. Use your plan and stick with it until it gives you feedback that something needs to be adjusted. Your trading plan must have critical elements such as the method you trade, your trading edge, trade management, goals, results tracking, and how you will learn from your trades in order to take your trading to the next level of success. You should also define what success is for you. For most people, success is the ability to create their living 100% from the markets. That's a pretty good goal and a completely achievable one. Your plan should provide an objective measuring stick so that you can manage your trading business objectively and make changes to continuously improve your results. Trading plans don't have to be complex, but they should be flexible enough to change after you gain data from large pool of trading results. Remember that a big part of success in any venture in life is to do something consistently over a long period of time. This can be quantified into following a trading plan over a large number of trades. One, build a winning psychology. There is a common misconception surrounding traders who have become successful. Many people think that these successful traders have something special about them that they themselves do not. While this can be true in some cases, 99% of the rest of the time it's absolutely false and misleading. Winning traders have learned to follow a disciplined plan that has given them the conviction to stick to it 
no matter what the markets or anyone else says or does. In order to develop a winning psychology, you must first understand the general public's psychology in the markets. Fear, selling, and greed, buying, are what mainly dominate the markets with pit stops filled with ambivalence, price going sideways. Greed is what a trader will enter a long position after the market is already up way beyond its average daily range. Fear is why people hold on to losing positions too far beyond how much they were willing to lose on the trade that, like the herd, all seem to sell at the worst possible time, right before the selling has finished. Don't follow the herd to the slaughter. Learn to capitalize on the herd's mistakes. Based on these comments above, we can say that greed buys too late and fear shorts, sells too late. The rational trader with a well-defined plan is selling their long positions near into the greedy strength and buying back their shorts near the end of the selling. As traders, it is not our job to pick tops and bottoms. Rather, we look to take out the middle's chunk of a move, then move on to find another trade. Fear has the ability to immobilize many traders. When their trade starts to go against them, they start to panic. And for many people, panic turns into inaction. What should be done is the trade should be exited without emotion, as per your pre-trade plan. You don't have to like taking a loss, but while you are in the heat of battle everything, you do must be cold and calculated. If you get out of a trade for a 2% loss and it continues to move against that position another 10%, you would be happy to take the 2% loss over the 10% hit. Keep in mind that most people want to be right. Most people can't admit when they are wrong until the pain becomes so unbearable that there is absolutely no choice but to exit the position. Usually it's the broker forcing the positions closed because there are no more margins to sustain the losses. Always remember that the markets will be correct, no matter what your opinion is. If your trade is not working the way you thought it would, then you need to get out and look for something else to put your money to work in. You cannot let the emotions of fear and greed immobilizes you. Have a plan and stick to it. Be positive. No one wins all the time. If you want to improve your results, you must make small course corrections through you trading results and feedback. Hardships and losses do not equal failure. Losses are stepping stones to your success. A loss is down payment on your next winning trade. Learn to unlock the lessons in your losses and you will unlock the door to success. You must learn to crawl before you sprint. Be passionate. Get excited about your trading business. Feel that you are on your way to becoming a master trader. Each trading day is a gift for you to discover something new and potentially profit from. The market exists for one reason and one reason alone, to serve you. Having controlled enthusiasm is the key. Have fun and enjoy the process for when you look back on it. When you are a true professional, you will be able to see all the things that you thought were a waste of time then that turned out to be the reasons you succeeded. Be persistent. Every hardship and loss carries with it a benefit that you must learn on your journey to becoming a true professional trader. It is simply not possible for you to fail until you decide that you have failed and given up. Think of persistence as being like a cork. If you put a cork in a glass of water, it will float. Even if you push it down, the cork will keep pushing back at you until it finds a way around your blockade and floats right back to the top. The cork is the most persistent object on earth. No matter what you do, the cork will find a way to get back on top. Be like a cork. If you have to, tape a cork to your trading screen so that whenever you hit a rough patch, you will know in your heart of hearts that you are a cork and that this rough patch will too pass because of your unrelenting resolve to succeed. Be a cork. Productive Approaches to Losses. Remember that no one wins 100% of the time. This means that you will have to learn to accept losses as being part of the trading game. These losses will always come in the form of a well-thought-out stop-loss policy that was determined before you place the trade. If you are holding overnight positions, there is always the possibility market may move or gap significantly against your position and cause larger losses than you may have intended. Do you have a catastrophe plan? If not, Think about making one because there is nothing worse than losing more money than you intended and not knowing how to handle this larger loss. Every loss is a step towards your goal of becoming a consistently successful trader. There is something to learn from every loss that you have. Make no doubt about it, the lesson is there. 
Make it a goal to find at least one lesson from each loss. Did you make a mistake entering or exiting? Did you miss a key news point? Write out and keep track of all the lessons that you have learned. Study these lessons repeatedly to see if there are any common errors you are making that can be easily fixed. If the errors are a result of your method, then you may need to adjust your trading plan to accommodate this new discovery. Each trade should be completely independent from one another. No prior trades should ever have an effect on the current trade you are in because they have nothing to do with one another. Never carry any baggage over to your next trade. You will need to learn to reset yourself to zero before you place a new trade. If you have to, give yourself a break and step away from the computer until you are ready to come back fresh. Victim mentality. Having a victim mentality is one of the worst reactions that anyone can have in regards to anything in their life, especially in trading. People who feel that the market is out to get them are extremely weak-minded. This limiting belief is one that always allows for the trader to have someone else to blame for their own shortcomings. In effect, the trader with the victim mentality will never have to admit that they were wrong about any particular trade. Self-pity has no place in the master trader's world and does not serve any positive purpose. If you are feeling bad or upset about a trade, it would serve you much better to take a break and come back when you are ready to learn from that loss. Remember that your last loss is a down payment on your next win. Realize that you and only you are responsible for every trade that you take. If you place a trade on the advice of someone else, guess what? You made the ultimate decision to place that trade. You are in complete control of every trade you take and you alone have the power to make your trading decisions. Having a victim mentality will only serve to be self-fulfilling, so don't fall into that trap. Control your emotions. <laughs> it is very important to make sure you have calibrated your mind for success before you place a trade. Take stock of your emotions and how you are feeling before and during a trade. What is your physiology like? What is your mind focused on? Are the answers to these two questions conducive to good quality trading? Make sure that you are being objective in your trade management. Control what you can control and let go of the things that you cannot. You have the power within you to control your emotional state while you are trading and should never invite negative feelings into your mind during a trade. Make sure that you have a plan that is strong enough to answer anything that the market throws at you. Always keep objectively analyzing the sentiment and price information and update your trade management should a new catalyst hit the market that is contrary to your trade. Don't count the dollars that you are up or down while in a trade. Doing this is one of the quickest routes to confusion and emotional instability during a trade. If you have to, find a way to hide the blotter that shows your profit and loss of your open positions. This takes away any temptation that you may have. Profit and loss should never be the reasoning behind your trade management. Mental rehearsal. The mind is not capable of distinguishing between something that is vividly imagined versus something that happens in the physical world. The mind can only understand stimulus that is fed to it. The source of that stimulus is not relevant to the mind. It can be quite beneficial to having a pre-trading day visualization exercise that you do for 10 to 30 minutes right before you begin trading. This can be done right before bed as well. The key is to run over your trading plan for the day in your mind and try to see and feel how you will react to the situations that you will be faced with. See as much detail in your visualization as you possibly can. See the chart setting up and then running in your direction. See your profit statement at the end of the trading day. Feel the feelings of trading successfully and see yourself as a true master trader. Make sure that you are organized and focused on the tasks at hand and take stock of your emotions prior to trading. The subconscious mind. To become a professional trader, you need to have your subconscious mind engaged in your trading. You can do this by imagining that your conscious mind is the captain of a ship and your subconscious mind, the crew that is taking directions to help steer the ship. Make requests to your subconscious mind before retiring at night and write those requests down so that your conscious mind can continue to remind your subconscious mind about those requests. You must work hard and work smart, but you will need to take time off to recharge and allow all your hard work to be picked up by your subconscious mind. Refer to the four stages of competence and you will be reminded that the highest level of trading mastery comes at the point when your conscious mind no longer is a requirement to have great trading performance. The goal is to become unconsciously competent. Train your mind to look for reasons to stay in or add to a position that is profitable. 
Your mind should look for reasons to get out of a trade if it's not going in your favor. Beliefs. Your current beliefs are an accumulation of all your past experiences and influences. They are built both directly and indirectly into your mind. They are simply filters that your mind can perceive in the physical world and can act more like a deletion filter. Your mind makes it so that you will only see what is in alignment with your beliefs so that you can confirm to yourself that they are true and or you are right. Your beliefs must be evaluated on how useful they are to your trading success, not if they are right or wrong. You have the power to change your beliefs. Don't get stuck in the trap of trying to prove that your beliefs are true or correct. You need to change your beliefs so they are conducive to making money in the markets. What really is your reality? You need to decide and make that choice. Beliefs are something that you can change. Here are a few beliefs that can empower your trading if you truly believe them. Life and the universe we live in are perfect. The markets are my friends and are here to serve me. Losing trades are stepping stones to my goals and dreams. Everything that happens in the market is perfect, and as it should be based on the collective thoughts and actions of all investors at any given time. There are no limits to what I can do in the markets. My path and journey to trading mastery is one of the greatest experiences in my life. I will not fail. So despite the minefields out there, remember you are less than 100 trades away from truly unlocking the attractive bonuses and the trading role with your name all over it. Now let's talk more about Forex. Forex trading, also known as foreign exchange trading, is the buying and selling of currencies on the global market. It is a highly volatile and complex market, with trillions of dollars being traded daily. While it can be a lucrative venture for some, it is also known to be a high-risk activity. This is where the 90 rule in Forex comes into play. The 90 rule in Forex is a commonly cited statistic that states that 90% of Forex traders lose 90% of their money in the first 90 days. This is a sobering statistic, but it is important to understand why it is true and how to avoid falling into the same trap. In this article, we will delve deeper into the 90 rule in Forex, its implications, and how you can use it to your advantage. Why do 90% of Forex traders fail? There are a number of reasons why so many Forex traders fail. One reason is that Forex trading is a very complex and challenging activity. It requires a deep understanding of the markets, risk management skills, and emotional discipline. Unfortunately, many new traders do not have the necessary knowledge and skills to be successful. Another reason why so many Forex traders fail is that they are unrealistic about their expectations. They think that they can make a lot of money quickly and easily, but this is not the case. Forex trading is a long-term game, and it takes time and effort to become a successful trader. Many new traders fall into the trap of chasing quick profits and end up making impulsive and risky trades, leading to significant losses. Moreover, the Forex market is constantly changing, and it can be difficult to keep up with the latest trends and developments. This makes it challenging for traders to consistently make profitable trades. Additionally, there are many external factors that can impact the Forex market, such as political events, economic data, and natural disasters. These factors can be unpredictable and can cause significant fluctuations in currency values. How to avoid the 90 rule in Forex. If you want to avoid becoming one of the 90% of Forex traders who fail, there are a number of things you can do. First, it is important to educate yourself about Forex trading. There are many resources available online and in libraries. You can also take Forex trading courses or workshops to gain a better understanding of the market and its complexities. Once you have a good understanding of Forex trading, you need to develop a trading strategy. This should be a plan that outlines how you will enter and exit trades. Your trading strategy should be based on sound risk management principles, such as setting stop loss orders, and limiting your leverage. It is also important to have a diversified portfolio and not put all your eggs in one basket. Another crucial aspect of avoiding the 90 rule in Forex is to manage your emotions. Trading can be an emotional roller coaster, and it is important to keep a level head and not let your emotions dictate your trading decisions. Greed, fear, and impatience are some of the common emotions that can lead to poor trading choices. It is essential to have a disciplined approach to trading and stick to your strategy. Forex Time Frame Analysis One key aspect of successful Forex trading is time frame analysis. 
This refers to the process of analyzing different time frames of price charts to identify trends and make informed trading decisions. By looking at different time frames, traders can get a better understanding of the overall market sentiment and make more accurate predictions. There are several time frames that traders commonly use in Forex trading, including daily, weekly, and monthly charts. Each time frame provides a different perspective on the market, and it is important to analyze multiple time frames to get a comprehensive view. Let's take a closer look at the different time frames and how they can be used in Forex trading. Understanding time frames in Forex. The daily chart is the most commonly used time frame in Forex trading. It shows the price movements of a currency pair over a 24-hour period. This time frame is useful for identifying short-term trends and making quick trades. However, it may not provide enough information for long-term trading strategies. The weekly chart shows the price movements of a currency pair over a week. This time frame is useful for identifying medium-term trends and making more informed trading decisions. It can also help traders identify key support and resistance levels, which can be used to set entry and exit points. The monthly chart shows the price movements of a currency pair over a month. This time frame is useful for identifying long-term trends and making strategic trading decisions. It can also help traders identify major market cycles and patterns that can be used to predict future price movements. How to use time frames to your advantage in Forex trading. Now that we have a better understanding of the different time frames in Forex trading, let's explore how you can use them to your advantage. The key is to analyze multiple time frames to get a comprehensive view of the market. Here are some tips on how to use time frames effectively in your trading strategy. 1. Start with the higher time frames. Begin by analyzing the monthly and weekly charts to get a broad overview of the market. This will help you identify long-term trends and potential support and resistance levels. 2. Look for confluences. Confluences occur when multiple time frames show similar trends or patterns. This can provide a stronger indication of market sentiment and increase the likelihood of a successful trade. 3. Use lower time frames for entry and exit points. Once you have identified a trend or pattern on the higher time frames, you can use the daily or hourly charts to pinpoint entry and exit points for your trades. 4. Keep an eye on the news. While time frame analysis is important, it is also crucial to stay updated on current events and news that can impact the Forex market. This will help you make more informed trading decisions. Common mistakes to avoid when using timeframes in Forex trading. While timeframe analysis can be a powerful tool in Forex trading, there are some common mistakes that traders should avoid. These include 1. Overanalyzing. It can be tempting to analyze multiple timeframes and look for patterns, but this can lead to information overload. Stick to a few key timeframes and focus on the most relevant information. 2. Ignoring the bigger picture. While lower time frames can provide valuable insights, it is important not to lose sight of the bigger picture. Always consider the higher time frames to get a comprehensive view of the market. 3. Not adapting to changing market conditions. The Forex market is constantly evolving, and what works today may not work tomorrow. It is important to regularly review and adapt your trading strategy based on market conditions. Advanced Timeframe Analysis Techniques For more experienced traders, there are advanced timeframe analysis techniques that can be used to gain a deeper understanding of the market. These include 1. Multiple timeframe analysis. This involves analyzing three or more timeframes to identify trends and patterns. By looking at different timeframes, traders can get a more accurate picture of the market sentiment. 2. Fibonacci retracements. Fibonacci retracements are a popular technical analysis tool that can be used to identify potential support and resistance levels. Traders can use this technique in combination with time frame analysis to make more informed trading decisions. 3. Harmonic patterns. Harmonic patterns are geometric price patterns that can be used to predict future price movements. They are often used in conjunction with time frame analysis to increase the accuracy of trading signals. How to use time frames to build a successful forex trading strategy. Time frame analysis is an essential aspect of building a successful forex trading strategy. By analyzing multiple time frames, traders can get a better understanding of the market sentiment and make more informed trading decisions. 
Here are some key steps to follow when using time frames to build your trading strategy. 1. Identify your trading style. Are you a day trader or a long-term investor? Your trading style will determine which time frames are most relevant for your strategy. 2. Determine your risk tolerance. How much risk are you willing to take on each trade? This will help you determine which time frames are most suitable for your risk management strategy. 3. Analyze multiple time frames. As mentioned earlier, it is important to analyze multiple time frames to get a comprehensive view of the market. Look for confluences and patterns that can increase the accuracy of your trading signals. 4. Set entry and exit points. Based on your analysis, set clear entry and exit points for your trades. This will help you stick to your strategy and avoid making impulsive decisions based on emotions. 5. Regularly review and adapt. The Forex market is constantly changing, and it is important to regularly review and adapt your trading strategy based on market conditions. This will help you stay ahead of the game and increase your chances of success. Conclusion, the importance of time frame analysis in Forex trading. In conclusion, the 90 rule in Forex serves as a reminder of the challenges and risks involved in Forex trading. However, by understanding the importance of time frame analysis and how to use it effectively, traders can increase their chances of success. Remember to educate yourself, develop a sound trading strategy, and manage your emotions to avoid falling into the trap of the 90 rule in Forex. Ladies and gentlemen, as we wrap up this journey into the world of trading, I want to leave you with a few thoughts that I hope will linger in your mind long after this video ends. Trading, especially in the fast-paced and dynamic world of Forex, can be an accelerating adventure. It's not just about numbers and charts. It's about understanding the heartbeat of the global economy, navigating the twists and turns of the financial markets, and discovering the power within yourself to make informed decisions. Now, I know the idea of diving into trading might seem daunting to some. The markets can be unpredictable, and the learning curve might seem steep. But remember, every successful trader was once a beginner. They started with a spark of curiosity and a hunger to learn. Motivation is the driving force that can transform that initial curiosity into a lifelong passion. So, I want to encourage each one of you watching to find your source of motivation. Whether it's financial independence, the thrill of the game, or the desire to master a new skill, let that motivation be your guiding light. In the Forex world, the markets are always awake, and opportunities are boundless. But to navigate this terrain successfully, you need more than just technical know-how. You need resilience. The markets will throw challenges at you, and that's when your motivation will truly be tested. It's during those times that you'll discover the strength within you to persevere and grow. Surround yourself with knowledge, seek wisdom from those who've walked this path before you, and never underestimate the power of continuous learning. The markets evolve, strategies adapt, and staying ahead requires a commitment to staying informed. So, to all the aspiring traders out there, remember this. You have the power to shape your financial destiny. Forex trading is not just about buying and selling currencies. It's about making informed decisions that can impact your future. As you embark on your trading journey, stay hungry for knowledge, stay disciplined in your approach, and most importantly, stay true to the motivation that led you here. The Forex market is waiting for individuals like you, individuals with a passion for learning, a hunger for success, and the resilience to weather any storm. Thank you for joining me on this exploration of the trading world. I wish you all the success, fulfillment, and prosperity in your trading endeavors. May your charts be green, your strategies be sound, and your journey be as rewarding as you've imagined. Thank you for watching.